Hey everybody, I'm Brad and this is Cyberfluidics from Tattoo Smart. So I hope you've seen my previous video on pseudo filtering because this is an extension on that video where I elaborate on the many complex ways that I've discovered to tweak and customize my designs using these techniques. Here we'll explore the effects of liquefy, move, push, twirl, and pinch on the substrate layer. We'll also duplicate and merge layers and play with opacity and masks, all to create unique designs. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's get into it. So before I go into a more elaborate kind of demo, I want to review the layering structure and also introduce a couple of more things that you can do with the substrate patterns below. So if anything in your design, you do not want to be a part of this, this pattern process, you need to put it above everything you, you see here. You want, you want any kind of element that's not going to be a part of that. It has to be above the uh, deconstructed layer setup that we have here. Uh, it might even be a good idea to group them together just like this. As far as what, you, what else you can do underneath here, this is what I would really like to show you here. Let's make a new layer. I'm going to select white. And I'm going to use, see, I already have a brush folder here that I titled Substrate. And I really don't use a whole lot of different things, mostly because you can do so much with Liquify and other things like that uh, once you have actually in your layer here. So just Sim 1, let's use that. You need to make yours like that. Go back to the other vi video. It shows you how to do this to your brushes. And let's go over here and select a black. Turn off if the image above so I can see what I'm doing. Zoom out all the way. Fill it in. Looks a little light. Looks a little light. You want it to look about 50% gray. Even that's a little dark. Let's try it again. That looks great. That looks great right there. All right. So you see, I use the smallest version that I have. So I'm going to actually save that one. Let me, uh, I'm gonna, before I do any manipulation of it, I just want to duplicate it because I don't want, I want to be able to pull back from this later on. And as far as this image, it looks a little bit light. So I'm going to come back to the image above here. And again, if you want to save it, just duplicate it first. I want to darken it down. That looks good. Come back to my topmost substrate here. All right. Now I'm gonna get I'm gonna get loose here. I'm gonna just start trying to have some fun. So I just chose a selection and I blew it up a little bit, turned it to the side. Now I'm coming over to liquify, which is right over here in this magic wand. Let's see, I got push, size max. I like to do this in such a way that it kind of gets sculpted to the shape of the object. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit and nuance some of this over here. And let me choose expand. I want to get a little wild. Let's turn back to push. 
actually let's see how extreme we can really get here let's let's just really screw it up do some kind of fluid painting going to pinch compress that down a little bit i want to expand out these tighter ones turn down the size so i can just target these And this is a little harsh of an edge right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it out this way. All right. There's probably something interesting under here to work with. So I'm going to turn off liquify and come to the selection or move tool. And twirl it around. See what comes out. That's really just looking for something that, uh, that looks interesting to me. Let's just go with that. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to turn this off, come back to my layer below, the original, duplicate it again. Come to the selection tool. Sorry, this isn't the selection tool. I think this is more like a, it's called a move tool. I don't know the words for these things. Come back to liquify again. I'm liking that a little bit better already. Let me turn down distortion. I feel like that's making things a little too weird to me. Let's try a twirl left. Expand again. I like that. Let's do it again. Now let's actually look, let's look back at here and I'm going to try and imagine what sort of complementary line I want to add to this. You know what I'm going to do actually? I'm going to delete the one underneath here that I just made. Use this one that's right here, duplicate it and liquefy it. All right. Push. Back up a little bit. Let's try it again. To our left. And pinch. It's fine for the, enough for this demonstration. Now. Now, this is where it gets weird. So I ha you see I have all these multiple substrates here. And let me actually, this might have been the first time I'm going to show this. Let's turn off the affected image on top. And you see what happened to this underneath. And you see all these different layers here. What you can do at this point is I'm going to click on the end right here, which means normal, but I'm going to change the opacity. And you see all of this interact and change as it blends into the layer below. So let's turn on the layer above, come back into this one here. You see it interact and the, the crossover that's happening between these. That was pretty wild. Let's grab this substrate that's farthest down below. I'm not going to make a duplicate. I'm just going to bring it up here and I'm just going to go straight into it. Good to me. Turn this down a little bit. Let's turn it off. Let's bring it home and simplify this a little bit. One last thing, at least I'll sh I think I'll show you here. This will probably be the best thing to show at this point. Let's click the topmost one and add a mask to it. And the way I like to do this, I like to paint into it. 
which means I like to reveal as it paints. So select black, fill it up. Now that the entire layer is blocked out by a mask, I select white. And then I come over to my brushes and I don't pick anything from Cyberfluidics. I just pick any kind of airbrushy sort of shape that you like. I'm going to use a spit shape set right here. You see here, I can actually kind of work between them. And what's happening here is you get this sort of blend between things. There's a little bit of pixelation happening here because of the, it's not a, not the smoothest airbrush. I, I actually kind of like it like that. But um, what's happening beneath here is you see those gradients and the way that they're interacting, as long as everything equals out to about gray, if, as long as you equalize everything and it's to about a 50-50 gray, the, all the substrate beneath is going to work just perfectly. Let's come over here. Oh, yeah, some cool stuff. You know, a lot of a lot of the stuff that I make is just a whole lot of exploring that happens in here. And it can be fun or it can be frustrating, but I really enjoy doing things this way. Anyway, I think I'm going to stop this and move on to some of the next videos, which are going to be some more elaborate demos. To review for this, basically I was showing you that any extra elements that you have should be on top. And the image that you're working with, the value that you want to appear or the perceptible values that you want to appear should be, this image should be on top and set the hard mix mode. Then all your substrates can be below there and you can combine and mix together those substrates by either changing opacity, moving them around or adding masks.